Being a lighthouse keeper in the early days was not for the faint of heart. Isolation, horrific storms, and the perils of rescuing others became a part of their lives. They had to be handymen who fixed the various problems of the lighthouse and keep themselves entertained on an island all alone for sometimes months at a time. These men and women were responsible for the safety and well-being of passing ships. Their jobs required an unimaginable amount of stress and hard work, and early lighthouse keepers often risked their lives for their duties. In this video, I would like to highlight three stories of the dangers and insane lives of lighthouse keepers. Before the light bulb was invented, the light in the lighthouse usually came from an open flame. It was up to the keeper to tend the flame and keep it lit all night. If the fire ever escaped control, the keeper had to act quickly to keep the fire from destroying the lighthouse. In 1755, a lighthouse off of England's south coast near Eddystone Rocks experienced this very situation. This lighthouse was made from a pitch-coated wood and a lead roof and was maintained by a 94-year-old lightkeeper named Henry Hall. Henry came from a long line of lighthouse keepers who worked along the English and Welsh coasts for hundreds of years. One night in December 1755, old man Henry was on duty alone when he discovered the spark from a lamp had set the lighthouse roof on fire. He attempted to put out the fire by throwing buckets of water over his head onto the blazing roof. And when he looked up to check his progress, he was showered by falling molten lead from the melting lighthouse roof. The lead burned his face, his head, his neck, his shoulders, and as his mouth was open, molten lead actually poured down his throat. Hall was soon joined by two other lighthouse keepers who noticed the fire, but they were unable to put the fire out. The men were forced to retreat the burning lighthouse and stayed in a nearby cave to avoid being hit by debris. The three men, one of which was severely burned and 94 years old, were stranded on the island for hours before a passing boat found them. The boat was unable to dock near the cave because of rough seas, so they threw a rope to Henry and the two others to tie around their waists. The boat then pulled them through the raging ocean to safety. Henry was immediately taken to a doctor who examined his burns. Henry told the doctor in a hoarse voice that the melted lead had run down his throat and into his body. The doctor did not believe him at first, saying that no one could have possibly survived swallowing molten lead, let alone lived for hours afterwards. Unfortunately, Henry Hall passed away 12 days later from his injuries. The same doctor who treated him performed the autopsy and revealed that his stomach contained a brick of solid lead. Another strange lighthouse keeper story came from the Flannan Isles in December 1900. On the 15th of December, the Arctor, a steamer ship, was making its way from Philadelphia to Scotland when it was passing the Flannan Isles. The ship noted in its log that the light from the Flannan Isles lighthouse was not lit, even though there were poor weather conditions. When the ship docked, it had made a complaint to the Northern Lighthouse Board about the sighting. The Lighthouse Board noted that three men were supposed to be stationed at that lighthouse, named James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and William MacArthur, and they sent a vessel straight away to check on them and to find out what the problem was. As the ship arrived at the landing platform, no one was waiting for their arrival. Boxes of provisions were still sitting on the landing stage. The captain of the relief ship blew its horn and even shot a few warning flares off, but there was no response. The crew of the relief vessel rowed ashore and ascended the steep set of stairs that led up to the lighthouse. According to these men, they suffered from an overwhelming sense of foreboding on the long walk up. Once they reached the lighthouse, they immediately noticed something was wrong. The front door was unlocked, and two of the three oil-skinned coats were missing, meaning that one of the keepers had left the lighthouse without one. This was odd, because all of this took place in the middle of a bitter cold winter. The crew continued inside and found that there were plates of half-eaten food and an overturned chair, as if someone had jumped up from their seat quickly. In their bedroom, all the beds were unmade, and the kitchen clock was even stopped. The oil lamps had all been cleaned and refilled as well. The crew of the relief vessel searched everywhere on the island and no sign of life was ever found. Five men from the crew stayed overnight to try and find more clues and to keep the lighthouse running. 
A few days later, the lighthouse log was found, and the crew immediately noticed something strange about the last few entries. On the 12th of December, Thomas Marshall wrote that they were experiencing severe winds the likes of which he had never seen before in 20 years. He also noted that James Ducat had been very quiet that evening, and that William MacArthur had been crying. William MacArthur was a seasoned mariner, and was known for his brawling, so why would he be crying in response to a storm? The next entry, written the next day, stated that the storm was still raging, and that all three men had been praying. This is also strange, because there were no reports of storms in the area during that time. In fact, the weather was reported as calm and sunny, they should have been perfectly safe. The final entry in the log was made a few days later, and all it said was, Storm ended, sea calm. God is over all. What did he mean by that? The crew never found any trace of the three keepers on the Flannan Isles lighthouse. Before widespread automation in the 1960s, lighthouses used Fresnel lenses, which increased the intensity and range of the lighthouse beacon. In the 19th century, many lighthouses required the keepers to make sure that the massive 2.5 ton Fresnel lens was constantly spinning, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The lens was set on wheels or bearings attached to a series of clockworks, which the keeper would wind up. The lens was set to spin at a specific speed, and passing boats would identify the lighthouse by the amount of time it took for the light to make a complete rotation. The best near frictionless bearing of the day that helped the lights rotate easily was liquid mercury. When dust, sand, and dirt would build up in the mercury, it was the keeper's job to strain the mercury through a fine cloth. The dangers of liquid mercury were not understood in the 19th century, and they didn't realize that the keepers were literally breathing in deadly chemicals for many hours a day. One of the symptoms of mercury poisoning can be hallucinations and madness. Modern scholars question if it was the mercury, not the isolation, that drove some lighthouse keepers to madness. Although it's difficult to tell, exposure to the levels of mercury that all these keepers endured on a day-to-day -day basis could be responsible for the actions and behaviors that people in the 19th century mistook for cabin fever, though I'm sure being stranded on a rock for a few months at a time didn't help much either. Thank you all for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time in the Library of the Bazaar.